Hi, welcome back, Miss Oberlander and Mrs. Sasek, sixth grade classes to your next homework assignment. We thought we would start out our lesson today with two photos of your teachers out on the water since our lesson is about water, water everywhere. The question we're going to be answering is why is water important to humans and human history? Let's go. How have humans used water in the past and how do they use water today? Well, from the earliest days of Jamestown and colonial America, water has been used for trade, taking goods from one place to another on boats to make money for businesses and to provide countries with products that were not necessarily grown or manufactured there has been taking place for a very long time. The Atlantic Ocean provided a major trade route between Europe, Africa, and the Americas. Not only were the countries trading valuable products, but sadly they were also trading people because of the slave trade. Trade is still going on in this way today. As you can see, the big cargo ship in this photo, those colorful Lego pieces stacked on top of each other are actually huge containers that are loaded onto the backs of trucks. But these containers are being shipped from China to the United States. And this is happening in present day. The trade routes that the United States has with the rest of the world is massive, as this world photo shows you. So not only was trading an important use of water from history, water is still a major resource today for trade. Humans have also used water to transport people from one place to another. The way the first Europeans got to America was by boat, as this was the main way of transportation back then. Boats were a major way to travel for hundreds of years. A boat like the one below took my great-grandmother and her family from England to settle in Australia in the early 1900s. A boat also took my great-grandmother from Australia to America when she married my great-grandfather. And water is still being used today as we can take cruise ships various places all over the world as a means of transportation. Water is a valuable resource for human survival, so it is only natural that most of the early settlements sprouted up along riverbanks like Jamestown along the James River. Take a look at the map of the Mississippi River. Do you see all of those little black dots and the dots with the stars inside? These represent cities and state capital cities. Where are most of those dots? Along the rivers, of course. Humans have used waters for thousands of years as a place to settle. Even back in England, the city of London was built up along the Thames River. And here in New York, Manhattan is also along a river too. So it wasn't just during Jamestown times that people settled on rivers. It's nowadays too. Pacific Oceans allow the United States to reach the other parts of the world. Check out all of those major trade flows. This map shows that water is a connection. It links the continents together. Because of the water routes, we have roads to get from one continent to another and one country to another. Those continents are not isolated anymore with no chance of ever seeing or meeting people from other parts of the world. These oceans are powerful connectors that bring so who used the Atlantic Ocean as a highway to America? Well, the early settlers used the Atlantic Ocean as their highway to get to America. In the same way that we use a GPS today, early settlers used the trade winds and ocean currents to map out their voyages across the ocean to make the crossing. This map shows the original Jamestown voyage of 1607 and the route that the settlers used. As each new ship arrived, the New World became more populated with early European settlers who had come by boat across the road of the Atlantic. Who else used the Atlantic Ocean as a highway to America? Explorers! They came before the settlers, and they had charted out these waters ahead of them. Like Christopher Columbus and others, the Atlantic Ocean was their way of getting to the new lands, to explore and find potential treasure to bring back home to the countries of Spain and Portugal in Europe. Also, immigrants. We can't forget the immigrants. They also used the Atlantic Ocean as their way of getting from their mother countries to America. 
You can see these immigrants from the 1800s on the boats coming to Ellis Island and being greeted by the infamous Statue of Liberty that represented a new life for these immigrant people. The Oberlander family, my ancestors, came by boat across the Atlantic Ocean from Germany, and it was on one of these immigrant ships that pulled into the port there in New York City that they came through to become Americans. Perhaps many of you can connect to that story with your heritage or know people who have come by boat to America, maybe even your parents or you yourself. This is a very interesting picture because you can see so many people packed on board, excited to see America for the first time. These are all immigrants. Early settlers used the Ohio River as a gateway to the West. The Ohio River was the way that the settlers traveled to move out West. They used the Ohio as their highway to bring their families to land that they could work and that they could farm. This river was part of the frontier, and the more people that arrived, the busier the Ohio got. As you can see, the port town of Cincinnati along the Ohio is full of water traffic. Also, inland port cities grew in the Midwest along the Great Lakes. Another major waterway that was important to American settlement brings us to the Great Lakes. There are five of them, and they touch all the red states on this map. You can see these lakes up close right here. Again, check out the many dots along the lakes. These are all cities. So many cities in the Midwest sprang up along this major water source. Even the city of Chicago is along the banks of Lake Michigan in Illinois. Farms and industries use these two big rivers, the Mississippi, which is that red line, and the Missouri River, which feeds into the Mississippi River to make a very long road for people and products to travel up and down to get from one place to another. Not only did this river system provide goods to the early settlers way back in our history, but it is still very much in use today. You can see this barge here using the river to transport products in the big factories along the Mississippi River banks is quite busy and active nowadays. Lewis and Clark explored the wilderness of America by traveling up the Columbia Territory and going to where few white men had ever been before. Their trek through the wilderness led them to the Oregon Territory, but they would have only gotten there by following the river, the Columbia River, as their route. And you can see these maps show the Columbia River leading to Oregon Territory. The Spanish were always after their gold, and this hunger for the precious metal of gold was definitely on their minds as they explored up the Colorado River. You can see the Colorado River there with the gray arrow showing many of those Spanish explorers sailed and went up the... And the Rio Grande River is the border between Texas and Mexico. You can see it right there with a the blue line. You can also see some of the major cities along the Rio Grande River. And here's a perspective from Mexico. As you can see, it is definitely the border between the United States and Mexico. This ocean, the Pacific, was also a route for exploration. You can see those are the three um, uh, explorations of Captain Cook, who definitely did a lot of exploring in the Pacific. And perhaps there is um, possible information out there that the Chinese did some exploring on the Pacific Ocean. And if you're curious to see uh, what kind of exploration the Chinese did of the Pacific and possibly the discovery of the Americas, go ahead and check out my website. I have a link to a YouTube video that might be of interest to you. And finally, the French and the Spanish used the Gulf of Mexico to explore Mexico and the southern United States. You can see that this was also a major area for them to get products and people from one place to another. This is an older map um, of the Gulf of Mexico, and I just think it's very interesting because it shows you how important this area was for these types of explorers in this time. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this and learned a lot about waterways and why water is so important to humans today and from back in history. We'll see you in class.